Hello everybody. Thank you for visiting my channel and watching this video. Give me one second. I don't know if you can hear that. That isn't a jet flying by. I do live in Utah. I live next, uh, I can't say next to you. I live within a facility of the Air Force Base here in Utah. Here comes another one. So I, I'm just gonna continue. If, if you can hear my voice, awesome. If not, you're not missing much. Um, not yet, at least. Um, thank you for visiting my channel. Uh, as I said earlier, thank you for uh, subscribing. Or if you haven't subscribed and you like to watch more of my videos, just hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification. And make sure you hit the all button on that so that way you get all my notifications so that when I post a video, you know. Um, I will be recording my videos on my days off most of the time, which are going to be Mondays and Tuesdays, and then hopefully, um, post them up by Saturday the latest after editing. I'm still new to this and still figuring out everything, so please bear with me if there's something weird or wrong, uh, or it takes longer for me to post videos. Um, I also apologize in advance if my video stand is, um... Give me one second. You may have noticed I have taped, oh, you can't see it on the camera, but I taped my canvas with some masking tape. Um, because I'm almost done with this diamond painting. I am working on Mandy's, Mandy Manzano, uh, Love at its Darkest painting from Diamond Art Club. I love her artwork. She's awesome. Um, she makes really beautiful artwork. She makes all types of artwork. Um, so yeah. So I'm excited that um, I'm almost done with this. I can work on my next one. Um, I apologize if my head sneaks in the video anytime during this recording. Um, because my... Again, I'm new to this, and so I just bought a simple TV mount, not TV mount, a phone mount, um, on Amazon, and actually I like it because it's very sturdy. It's, it's, it's definitely not wimpy. Um, it's hard to bend, and it will stay in place for a while, and I think that's why I like it. It's good for, like, um... If you like watching something in bed and everything and have a nightstand and you just don't want to have your phone like holding it all the time, then this is like a stand for you. Um, so if you watched my last video, the one I just done, um, I'm just continuing it with that because I have to keep, again I'm new to this and I want to keep my videos not too long so I'm still trying to figure out how long I should make videos. And I figured right now about 45, anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes for me, I think it's a good time for people because it's not too long, not too short, um, especially if you're working on projects. So whip out whatever you're working on or if you're just cleaning around the house and you just want somebody to listen to while you're vacuuming or doing the dishes or cooking dinner, um, please continue to listen to me. Um, if not, no worries, no hard feelings. Um, uh, if you're um, watching this video for the first time, I've made videos in the past. I recommend you watching those videos just to get a sense of what these point of these videos are for. In a nutshell, it's basically going to help me with my depression. Helps you to have someone to talk to or I mean listen to. I'm willing to talk to you if you want to put some comments down below. I will answer them in my next video. Um, hit that subscribe button so you know I uh, put up those videos and um, answer your questions in those comments below. Um, sorry if my camera shakes again. It's mounted to my table until I get a better one. Um, I don't know which ones I should look for. If you're if you're kind of a, like somewhat a professional or you like to record videos a lot. Now the jet's coming by, so I'm just gonna continue to talk. If, if it doesn't sound like it's that close, some of these jets that come by 
are very close to my apartment. Very, I don't get upset whatsoever. I grew up in a city that had an Air, an Air Force base as well. And jets threw, threw, <laughs> flew all the time where I lived. So if anything, it actually makes me feel more comfortable at home. Um, because I would hear these jets and it just reminds me of home. Um, home is in California. I'm not going to specifically say where. Um, I'll just say the Central Valley. If you know what that is, kudos to you because you're a California native. And if you, know, if you know what I mean, Central Valley, and don't say the San, San Joaquin Valley, then you're definitely a native to California because only Cal natives would know what Central Valley means. Otherwise, I would have to say the San Joaquin Valley. Um, whew. Okay, all done. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Just joking. <laughs> um, uh, let's see what. Oh, so I was talking in my last video about movies um, and critics and everything. Um, my personal opinion is critics are just stupid. They are just egos, ego people, e people with big egos that want people to listen to them and do what they say. Um, you be the judge of your movies. You go out where you want to try. If you always judge, if you're always going to follow people based off what their advice is, then you may not, you, you won't be living a really good life, to be honest. Um, because you're not getting experience that you may like. An example, that critic or movie viewer may have gone a bad day. Maybe there was an audience member or somebody in the restaurant that was just having a bad day, or a family that was just having a bad day, and it just made your experience worse. Um, or a server or um, consistent stand attendee was having a bad day. All of those change through time. And when I was in culinary school, I had a teacher. A chef that said, um, always give things a second chance because your first experience may not be the best experience that restaurant has to offer. You can come back later at a different time, different day, and experience the same. The restaurant will be totally like night and day. It's, it, I, and I experienced that too. It's like surprisingly how different restaurants are between morning, evening, and afternoon because all these different crowds. Um, as a cook, I, as a server, as a server's assistant, I should say, as a cashier, I have worked in the food and beverage industry for a very long time. I'm not going to say a very, very long time, but a good 10 years. What's this, 21? Yeah, a good 10 years. Um, I just feel old thinking about how long I've <laughs> been in this industry. Um, one thing I would say is simply just be patient with people. Okay? Especially if you're going to go to a restaurant that's super busy at the busiest time. If you go in there... And you expect, if you go in at a restaurant at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock, um, and you expect to get your food within 5 minutes of ordering, I'm sorry, honey, ain't gonna happen. Unless you're McDonald's. Even then, it's like McDonald's honestly has gone downhill in speed of service. So there's a McDonald's right here, right where I live. And, um... The reason they're slow when I go is because, and I bless, like, bless their hearts, those workers who stay there, it's because of lack of staff. Um, usually I go at night, like around 1 o'clock in the morning on the weekend, and when I pull in, there's a line. And I'm thinking, okay, I expect my food to be there. It's going to be a while. It may not be as hot. Um... Because I like the beam, but I understand, like, hey, these people are backed up. They're 
probably like three or four people and there's a line out the door in drive through and people are getting pissed off because they haven't taken their order yet and it's like I've been in there. I've been in their shoes I like I understand like you have to understand like it is very hard to run a restaurant even a fast food restaurant with very little staff and McDonald's has developed this reputation of being fast and we get in that habit of um, sorry I was looking at the video um, artist I'm listening to too. I'm listening to Pandora on the radio relaxed uh, relax relaxing radio and it has the favorite artist I really like right now um, and um, reading what the name of the song is and um, uh, Yeah, so, um, McDonald's has developed this reputation of being fast, and but now it's like this, everyone anticipates their food to be in and out, like, f within five minutes or less, and that doesn't happen in any of the McDonald's I've been to, to be quite honest, um... And, um, so I'm very patient, and I don't like complaining about my food. Like, if I for they forgot something, you know, I understand. I'm not going to complain about it, because, you know what, it, if, partly, it's like, if I don't check right, right there and in there, before I leave the window, I'm not going to even bother. Um, because that way, it's like, whose fault is it really? I mean... Yes, it's like they should have made sure, but I was told how they bag these orders. Um, and I'm like, I don't think you do that. And and if you ever look at McDonald's, um, you'll notice the food is sent, like, it's made on two sides. One in-house, one for drive through And sometimes, just one side, and that's usually going to be for the drive through side, is makes both foods and um i've never worked at mcdonald's it's just just through pure observation and someone telling me that the person that bags the food actually has to bag both orders um as quickly as possible and looking at the screen and the food is sent down the chute just a straight chute and it ends up in like a little bin without actually having any designation of what side is what. Um, especially if you make it on the drive through side and it's for like a dine-in or in-house order. Um, that can be confusing. And, um, and so it's like, I don't blame them, especially when they're in a rush. They're trying to get these orders out as quickly as possible. I don't know what the situation is with their bosses. Their bosses may be handing them like, hey, we need to get these orders out as quickly as possible. They may have the mentality of like, we'd rather, rather have mistakes than being late and getting these food, this food out. Um, and so... I don't blame them. Even for McDonald's. I don't blame them. Um, and. Hold on one second. Okay that's not too bad. Um, some of those jets do fly over like. Right next to my house. Or actually my apartment complex. And sometimes when I. Go out or coming back from my apartment. I catch them right as they're. Like. Like lifting off from the airport and I they are so low at least they just left like just they just literally had just um what's the word taken off that as they turn I can actually see 
pretty much almost everything. And if the sun is at the right angle, I can actually see the pilot. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking about detail pilot, like pilot, but I can see, oh, there's the pilot. And then it's the sun kind of glaring off his helmet. And then they, they fly off. Um... It's just always cool to see those jets fly. It's just, to me, it just, oh, it's like a kid in a candy shop. I get so excited. Um, uh, to um, see those people do such a wonderful job in those things, because it, I don't think I could ever do what they do. Or at least even comprehend half of the stuff that you have to know to fly one of those things. Um, so yeah, um, back to McDonald's and being patient. Just be patient with these people. When you're in a dining restaurant, be patient with these people. Where I work, everything's made to order. Okay, you have to understand. If you come in at our our dinner rush starts about five thirty six o'clock. You come in at like 6.30, you see a line in drive through you come in the lobby, you see a bunch of people in the lobby, and and there's families, okay? These people are not ordering for themselves, they're ordering for their entire family, okay? Our kitchen is small, for what we do and how much we make and sell is small. Um, but I feel that ensures quality over quantity. And we make everything fresh. Everything's made to order. Um, and people on Fridays, it's Fresh Friday where we work. We have we offer COD. And oh boy. Uh, Lent season's coming up. Uh, for those who don't know who Lent, what Lent is, not who, but what Lent is. It's a season, not season, it's a time of period where Christianity, when they say Christianity, usually it's traditionally mostly all Christians, um, except for a few, that um, basically for 40 days, I believe, they give up something. Usually it's food. They usually get something food-wise. Um, Catholics tend to give up red meat on Lent, and so they eat a lot of fish. For 40 days and it's the observance of Christ um, supposedly if I remember correctly it's Christ's um, when he went into the uh, went away I can't say went away but he was tempted by Satan for 40 days and nights um, where he fasted and everything it's supposed to be symbolic of that that um, and everything and it starts after Fat Tuesday. It starts on Ash Wednesday and ends um, the Friday before Easter, I believe. Um, and so, but normally out to that range, Friday, Friday is our fish day where I work. Like, you, like, it's just fish, 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 fish. It's ridiculous how much fish we go through. And, um, and our, uh, what's the word? Age group. Um, is mostly seniors. When I say seniors, I'm talking about like 50-ish and up. And I say ish because... Actually, I would say more like 60s and 70s and up. Uh, get more cod. Like, when I see guests order cod, it's like your grandpa and grandparents ordering the cod. Not your mothers and fathers. Um, and so, um, so be patient. Uh, food does take a while to get made. And especially if... They get overwhelmed because there's a lot higher expectation of people coming in, uh, shortage of staff. You have to understand, restaurants don't run perfectly. Um, they're human just like us. In fact, I'll tell you a little funny story. Um, 
maybe two, three weeks ago, I was working in the drive-thru where I work. And I'm the manager where I work. And I had sent somebody on break. Their lunch break. And I greeted them, did the normal spill. And then he just, he said this, that um, he waited for five cars in front of him before he got his food. In which where I work is like, that makes sense. We park cars. Like if the food's not at the window, we'll park you guys, like park the car um, and tell them like, we'll bring the food out here as quickly as possible because it's made fresh. And um, so in my mind, what he was saying was like, he had to wait for his food, okay? I'm like thinking, okay. And I was like, okay. And then he starts swearing. He goes, you forgot my effing fries. And I was like, oh. Sir, I said, sir, please don't swear. And he goes, well, give me my effing fries. And I said, sir, please don't swear. He goes, you guys effing messed up. Give me my effing fries. I said, sir, I'm not going to help you if you swear. And I just kind of like zoned him out. But I could hear him drop the F mom like every other time before he drove off. And he said some other, um, I'm laughing because it's so funny, um, other inappropriate words, not necessarily swear words, but he said some other, um, other parts that I think we can all, um, think what he, know what he said, um, and what's funny is because people can hear what's happening in the kitchen because our speaker. So when you speak into our speaker, it goes right into the kitchen. So the kitchen can hear what you're ordering and start making it um, to get a heads up. And I, I told him, like, sir, please apologize. We're happy to serve you. And he was just like, blah, blah. He's like, this and that. I was like, sir, I'm not going to serve you. And... Um, he just drove off. And what's funny is because we actually have a camera that actually is kind of hooked up um, to our drive area so we can see when a car comes. And um, he was pointing the bag at the screen like if I could see the screen. It was just so funny. And... Um, while he was swearing up a storm, and I had zoned him out, the kitchen comes out, and he like he look at me like, "What in the hell is going on?" I said, "We apparently forgot his fries," and he started swearing at me. So I told him like, "I'm not going to help him if he continues to swear." And I asked for an apology. I mean, honestly, there's no reason why you should be that upset that we missed a fry. And um. And it's not the first time it's happened before where um, a guest has swore at one of our staff members. Um, there was an incident between a, me and another uh, former manager before he left. Um, and uh, I was in the office doing some paperwork and he called out my name and I was like, okay, there in a second. He's like, I need you now. I was like, okay. And so I jumped out there, and here's this woman yelling at the fellow, the, my fellow manager. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? And um, and he turns to me. And he tries, he's trying to explain what's happening, and this woman continues to yell. And um, what happened was that apparently her food was mislabeled in the sense of where it was supposed to be going to. Um, and they waited over 20 minutes before they said something. And... He apologized, and he's willing to, like, we can 
give you your food right now and make it fresh for you. And she's like, no, I want a refund. And, and he's like, okay, I need your card. And that's when I walk out. And she comes over here and says, like, I want to, uh, she's like, are you the man other manager? I'm like, yes, how can I help you? And she goes, this person, your ma your fellow coworkers holding on to my card. I was like, okay. Well, I said, we do need your card to process the refund. And she goes, well, you already processed it. And he's like, no, I haven't. Because I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to process it, but you're not allowing me to. You're not allowing me to. And so I took over the, I took the card. I processed the refund. And during this time, her friend is recording this entire conversation. She's yelling. I mean, like, full-blown yelling at us. And my coworker, I can tell he was starting to get very pissed off. Um, and he was trying to, like, ma'am, you need to calm down. There's no reason to be upset. She was like, I have every reason to be upset and everything. You guys waited for my food for 20 minutes. And I was thinking in my mind, like, why do you wait so long? Um... Most people within five or six minutes of ordering, if they know it's a slow day, most of our guests, you know, when it's busy, they know there's going to be expected to wait. Um, but if it's slow, most of them will come up and be like, hey, we just want to check on our order. And, um, and usually we can fix it right there on the spot, but not, not these people, um, these two ladies. And um, she had said that... Um, I said, well, here's your refund. I apologize for that. It looked like that we got mislabeled and everything. And she was like, what's what? What's your corporate website? I said, Culver's.com. That's where I work. Um, and she's like, well, no, I want, I said, what's your, the address? I said, we don't have a ad address specifically for complaints you have to go to the website and there it tells you how to contact them i don't i said there is no we don't have a card we don't have a pamphlet that actually has that information on it you just have to go there and then she said well i'm going to because i'm going to complain that you guys did this and that and then she was like i'm diabetic i could have died you guys i said i could have died from not having my food and i'm diabetic and the first thing that came to my mind was because she had said that she could have died from low blood sugar. She had her insulin in there. And, um, and at the time, I was still kind of like a new manager. Um, and, um, Sorry. Um, and I didn't know what information I was allowed to ask because I was like, well, I'm diabetic. I know a lot of stuff. And she said that she could have died with low blood sugar. And I said, if I'm thinking in my head, if that was the case, then she would have, she should have, like, could have, we could have, like, given her apple juice, custard, soda, something to give sugar in her blood sugar. Like, if somebody suffers from hypo glycemia which means they suffer from low blood sugar um i'd be willing to give them apple juice or a soda for free to get something in their system and if she was that usually most people will have on them some type of candy sucrose tablet sucrose tablets or syrup something where the body can almost isn't like well, can't say instantly absorb but absorb it within five minutes or so <clears throat> and bring her sugars back to a normal level where we can gotten her food or um, seek medical. Uh, she could have gotten medical attention. Um, gotten the medical attention she needed. And she goes, "I'm diabetic, and I have my. I could have died if I didn't get my insulin right here." I said, "I have." She didn't say if I didn't have my insulin. She goes, "I have my insulin right here," and everything. And I'm like. Again, I was thinking, why didn't you say anything to us? Why didn't you say, hey, 
My, why don't you send your friend over saying, hey, my friend is suffering from low blood sugar. Is there something you can give me or a cup? I can get her in, like, her system. I would totally get her apple juice as it, no charge. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, would have helped her any way possible. But no, she freaked out and everything. And she would not remain calm and everything. And And, um, now she was going to post this video and she was going to sue us and everything. I'm like, I'd like to see you sue us. Um, and so my, my co work, my co manager called the owner and got permission to call the police on her. And she, and, and he goes, I just called the cops. He goes, if you don't leave, um, now you'll, like, the cops are going to be here. She goes, well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to talk to them because you know this, this, and all this stuff. And it's just so funny to just, like, how people are sometimes where it's like they think we're stupid. Like, even the cop, when he came by, she was still on property because where we have our building, it's private property. Our owner owns the land, so it's considered private property. And, um, and so, uh, I apologize if my voice sounds distant. I'm looking for some, uh, some steam over here. I'm looking for what color? Gray, brownish? Um, need that one. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. This is how I organize my stuff. <laughs> Um, in one of the videos I explain like why I do what, how I set up or kit up my diamond paintings, um, the way I did. I apologize if the camera shakes, I gently nudged it. Pretend. <coughs> this is what I'm looking for. Nope, that is not what I'm looking for. What is it? Nope, that's not it. Oops. Why? Sometimes when I can't find the color I'm looking for, I'm looking over here to look for the number. And sometimes that's a little bit more easier to do. Actually, probably be like a brown, purple. Nope. Nope. Getting close. This one? Nope. Okay, pass it up somewhere. Hold on one second, you guys, while I look for that bag. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Apologies, I found it. Here it is. Of course, this was the last bag. I think I, like, I was like, oh, I think there it is. After I pause, you guys, there it is. <laughs> How ironic. Um... Uh, um, oops, I apologize for the camera shaking just a little bit. Let me tilt you guys. See if I can do this. I can turn the camera. There we go. No. Eh. So I'm just trying to see where my field of diamond painting is. So I apologize if you're just staring at blankness right now. There are some areas that are kind of like out of the range, kind of like right here, right where my uh, index finger is, kind of crops off where I need to diamond paint real quickly. So um, don't freak out. I'm right here. Um, and so... She was still here, and when the cops came and everything, and um, he comes in and we tell our situation and everything, and um, I told the officer, like, hey, I'm diabetic too. And I said, it's very suspicious that she says that she nearly died because of her diabetes and everything, and I'm like, 
if that was the case, if she was suffering from what she said, that I said we could have given her apple juice, custard, soda, um, applesauce, something sweet. We have sugar packets. We just done sugar water. Um, um, but she didn't. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I've, I've dealt with a couple of people with diabetes. Um, and she goes, yeah, it is suspicious that she said that she's diabetic, but didn't want any assistance or anything like that. And he is like, what would you like guys to me? I said, our owner said she's no longer allowed on our property. She's no longer welcome here. Um, and he was like, okay, he goes, I'll let her know. And then she has to leave. Um, we gave her her refund. We told her that and everything. Um, we told him like what happened and everything and she was like just still angry and I think she wanted we but we all figured that she wanted something in return like free food or free like, money or something um, I've yet to see that video to be posted on YouTube or any other social media to my knowledge um, if you guys do find that video, let me know. I would love to see that video. Um, seeing if there's any other colors I need over here. Um, and, um, sorry guys, I use it like reading glasses. I just took them off so quickly. Um, Just be patient. Have a... Uh, excuse me. Understanding. And the food and beverage under uh, business. Now, there are some exceptions where it's like... Okay, I understand. Like, there's there's points where it's like, okay, you have to complain. You have to say something. Um, but... Let them give the restaurant a chance to kind of make it up. Like, maybe they just had a bad day. Um, one thing people think is, like, they're going to get perfect results every single time um, people get there. And it's just like, we're human. The restaurant business is not run by robots. Um... People run it. People are humans. People are going to make mistakes. I think that I said peoples. People are going to make mistakes. And, um... Just have compassion. Like, really, it's just like... You create more stress when you complain and yell. Actually, let me rephrase that. You create more stress when you're angry when you report your complaint to a uh, person that you're at the establishment. You really are. You're creating more stress for the person you're complaining to, and that gets rolled over into the person that had like caused the issue. Um, we don't know why they caused that issue. So when you guys complain about food, like there's places where it's, it's, it's okay to complain. But you have to understand, like, don't be angry. Don't be mad. Don't yell at the person. Don't swear at people because somebody got something wrong. Um, that's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help the situation. If anything, it's going to uh, intensify the situation. And, um... Um... And if, and the number one thing I hate, I hate, I hate, let me emphasize the hate part, um, is when people say, well, the guest is always right. No, you're not always right, sir. When when was a guest ever right? Really, like when they complain. Um.
I apologize if my hair gets in the way on my head. Um, that is such a bad, bad saying. And I hate when I do that. And when I, when I say that, I mean I just hit my hand on my tray and the diamonds popped out. And now they're all over the place. Now I have to go and get one individually and just place them wherever I can. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, customers always right. Is is the worst saying ever. And if you look up that saying, it actually started, I believe, in England with a grocer or a store because he was trying to promote... Um, either he's trying to attract customers or his complaints um, were all like bad and everything. And so, and I believe it was England. If it's not, I apologize. Um, but it was to promote um, basically people coming to their store. Saying if you had any issues, just let them know and they would fix it. And now people will say, well, the guest is, the customer's always right. I'm like, well, first of all, to me, you're not a customer, you're a guest. You come into our restaurant or establishment, I'm going to treat you like a guest. You're here to buy stuff. Yes, but you're here also to enjoy. It's not a service. You're not buying like a TV. Um, you're not buying a sofa. Even even then, I still treat them like a guest. I treat them with respect. Um, I'll do almost anything for them to make them have a good experience. Um, I put quality over quantity anytime. Um, because honestly, what's going to make the guest happy is them remembering a good time. That's what bring backs, bring backs, bring backs, bring back guests. Um... To your establishment. Um, how many people have actually gone back bad after having a bad experience? Multiple times. Except for McDonald's. I always go to McDonald's when it's like, even though I know it's low, it's McDonald's. I don't have high hopes for them. Um, you don't. You really don't. You don't go back. Um... And if I have a bad experience at a restaurant I try for the first time, I always try to go back later. Um, at a different time, maybe a different month, and see how it is. And usually, honestly, it's improved. Like, either I just had went on a bad day for them, or they got multiple complaints and they changed their uh, staffing, or they changed it to be better needs. And I just messed up. Okay, one second. Um... Um, yeah, and, um, and often I go back again, and it's, like, a good experience. And so, um, I know I was talking about movies, we kind of went into food, um, which is my, like, category. I know a lot about cooking and baking through my experience in culinary schools. Um... So when you guys go out to eat, keep that in mind that especially during now with the COVID and restrictions and everything, things have changed. Be patient. Today's, today's word is patience. Be patient. Just like your diamond painting, be patient. You will get it done. Those who have, like if you use your massive diamond painting projects, you, my God, these people have more patience than I do, I honestly think. But be patient. Take time to take care of yourself. Keep in mind that we are humans. When you go out to eat, remember, those are humans too. We don't know the lives they're facing. We don't know 
the stress they have right now in their lives. So be patient with them. Be supportive. Okay? Be nice. Okay? The world the world needs be needs more nice people. Are you going to be one of those people? Are you going to be a nice people? Are you going to be a good person or a bad person? Um be nice. Kindness goes a long way. Um Sometimes it's like uh, it's kind of like a pay it forward. Sometimes it'd be like we need to start focusing not on ourselves but on other people. How can we help other people? Sim just simply by saying um, thank you. We appreciate your hard work. Um, Thank you for doing a good job. Like where I work, I always say, is there anything else I can get for you? And they're like, oh, we forgot napkins. But we said, no problem. I, I, I said, I, I'm willing to get it for you. I'm more than happy. And um, and every time I tell them, like, is there anything else? They're like, um, I guess said, you, I always ask, like, you want ketchup, mustard, fry sauce? For those who don't live in Utah or Idaho, fry sauce is a, a sauce that you dip your fries in. It's, it's. In basic form, just ketchup and mayo. Pretty much, that's it. Toss in some spices, uh, some sugar, and you get fry sauce. Um, everyone makes it differently. The brand we use is just addicting. Like I love it. I haven't eaten used. I I used it in a while. I used it like I think my last lunch I had at work. Um. <laughs> um We'll go into that in another subject why I kind of laughed to myself for a second. Um, but um, it's time for me to say goodbye because it's just about 48 minutes on my video. And um, thank you for watching. Um, again, I'm going to try these short clips. I'm going to probably, if you look at the video back to back, it's basically me back to back pausing, stretching giving you guys a break to stretch up or continue watching um, my videos. Um, if you guys like the time length between 30 and 45 minutes right now, um, I'm doing about I'm trying I'm doing about 45 minutes, um, so that way you're not sitting down for a whole solid hour. I know you can always pause it and everything, but you um, it's good to get out and watch another video <coughs> excuse me so that way you don't know like oh crap i forgot where i left off if you close the channel or something you look at something else um you don't have to worry about um that so with that i will say good night Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Um, thank you for watching my video. Hit that like button if you like my videos or want to see more. Um, I can't really see more. I'm going to make videos regardless if you like them or not. It just helps me like know where I'm like, keep track of what I'm talking about. Um, always, always leave comments, suggestions, questions below. Um, I'll be happy to answer them the moment those are posted in my next video. Um, hit that subscribe, bu subscribe button. If you know somebody that likes these videos or would like these videos, tell them to send them my way and make sure you sus make sure they subscribe and hit that bell and make sure they hit that all notification button because um, YouTube does not let you know when I upload a video. It only does it when you hit that all button um so that way you know i posted a new video um and you won't be left in the dark um so thank you for watching my video if you have any questions about diamond painting where i get my diamond paintings how i do diamond painting feel free to ask my unboxing video does kind of explain a basic version of diamond painting um 
if you want a more detailed video, just say, hey, I like more detail on how to diamond paint. Please feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to make videos on that. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on it. I'm still, I can't say I'm new to diamond painting. I've been doing it for just under a year. Um, but um, please let me know if you'd like more information about them. I'll be happy to direct you to people who are more appropriate um, or I can say appropriate, more educated um, in the subject of diamond painting. And um, again, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. So again, just make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Make sure it's on, you hit the all one when you hit that bell and you'll be notified of my new videos. Until then, I will see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.